Hello everybody and welcome back to Thornton Farm. It's a bit of a wet day today, so this is going to be a perfect opportunity for us to work on the cows. Whoa, the carriages on that train are going berserk. And here comes the diesel. Let's get a better view for this. You've probably seen them before, but you can never beat standing on a bridge while a train goes underneath. Oh yes. It's actually uh, quite a big train this. But we can't stand here train spotting all day. We better go and start the work. Um, yeah, it's a pretty miserable day. So field work is going to be out of the question I think. So it's pretty much going to be just buying and working on the cows. Uh, it's going to be quite expensive. So we can't buy too many. But luckily we do already have silage and obviously we already have water as well. Oh yes, I forgot to mention. Um, this was expected. We, we already knew this was going to happen. All the fields which we don't own, which have crops in, will have withered by now because it's just one of those things. We don't own the fields, so no one is managing them. Um, I knew this when I started the series, this was going to happen. But as you can see, three of them have withered. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing because Apparently, I haven't really looked into this yet, but apparently there is a green manure mod and you can actually plough it in and you can increase the nutrients by ploughing in the withered crop. So, if that is true, then I want to get that mod and that will actually uh, be really good, a really good thing for us to do. So, I think when we can afford to buy those fields, we'll do it that way. So we actually benefit from the withered crops. Obviously, we can't uh, harvest them but it's not all wasted. So, I'm going to put this in the workshop, in the dry, along with the mower, and we'll shut it up as well because we don't want anyone wandering into here. Now, the best machines, oh yes we do, we do own the seed drill. I totally forgot we had bought it, but we actually own both of the big ones. In fact, I think everything we own now is either um, bought outright or it is sort of uh, higher purchased for example this one here um, so what we're going to do is begin feeding those cows um, I think this is the cow shed just here pretty sure it is so we can't buy too many it's gonna be quite expensive I think we'll probably be going with like 15 or 20 to start off with but then when we can afford it we'll obviously get quite a bit more. That is 15 and already you can see the money is fairly low. I'm not going to go any lower than that because otherwise we're going to be in debt again which we really don't want. But here they are, they're in our field back here. Um, once we've given them straw they can produce the manure. They also have the milk, I think it's the milk fill point so we can take it off to the dairy. We then have the feed trough, I think it is, or this could be the, the uh, water trough. Uh, we, we're going to have both because as far as I'm aware you do give them water on this map. You don't give them water on every map. It's like an option. But I think with this one it is. Um, so, yes, let's begin work here. We're going to give them silage to begin with because it's very simple. The yard is right here. And we can just literally give them a, a great big buck rake full of fermented silage. Not the best thing for them to have because really they want to have the total mixed ration but for the time being this is going to be absolutely fine. So we get a great big load on there. I don't know if they're going to need it all but I would have thought their feed trough is going to be under cover. I think that is their water trough. But as I've never done the cows before on Thornton Farm it's going to be quite hard to work out but I'm hoping it's going to be like a trigger here. It might not appear with the trigger unless we've got it in a trailer. But all I can do is just test it very slowly. There's a trough-like thing here. So let's just see if that did nothing. Did that register? Uh, no, it didn't. Okay, so it might actually be easier if we put it into a trailer first of all. It'd be less wasteful that way. So I'll bring a trailer around here. 
And we'll do it that way because then at least we'll know exactly where the trigger is. I think, yeah, the uh, AS trailer is around here somewhere. Use the John Deere today. And we better not block in those straw bales because we're going to need those for bedding. Strange, I've taken a mud guard off. Yeah, I might have just done that actually. Uh, let's try and put that back on again. There we go. It seems to be the same button to open the door and to remove the mud guard. So if you're in the wrong area, you can uh, do the wrong action. Okay, that should be good there. Let's just detach it from the back. And our trailer, I would have thought would be around here somewhere. Where did... Oh yes, it is around here. We could actually use one of those ones. Because that is a lot smaller. We're not going to need too much. Ah yes, hang on one second. Apparently there is a much better way into the field just here. Not half as bumpy. It's better than going up that sheer cliff. We'll just take the one. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is compatible with the silage. I think actually it's compatible with everything. They're just really good universal trailers. I have actually put the pressure washer in the way. That was a really daft thing to do. Anyway, let's get that fermented silage into the trailer and then into the mouths of the cows. This will probably be more than enough. I think it's about 8,000 litres of silage every single buck rig we do. So it's going to be just the one, I think. Otherwise, they're going to be overfed. Nowhere to keep it all. Is that working? Yeah, it is good. We don't want to waste anything. There's a big shadow from that plane. And we can put this back here again. We'll fold it up, actually, because it tends to fill up slightly and it doesn't look too good. There we go. So... Let's take them this silage, their first bit of feed. As for things like a, a bale shredder, don't think we've got one because obviously we're just starting off. But I'm hoping it's going to appear with the trigger, the unload point. If it doesn't, then I might be in the wrong place completely. Yeah. Usually, it would just do it in here. So, I'm going to have to keep looking for the right place. Right, I've just found this little area here. There are tyre tracks leading into here. And it does open. So, this may well be the place to go. And I think I've seen the place for the bales as well. Out in the field. Uh, but I'm not too sure yet. Obviously, the bedding would go inside. But I think, possibly... You can put a bale outside, but we'll have to look into that. But yeah, hopefully this is going to work. Yes, there we go. Looks more like manure than it does silage, but oh well. We know what it is really. So they've got their feed. Well, they've got some feed anyway. It's not the best thing ever, but at least they're not going to die. You know, one thing we should probably do is start to make our mini silage pit with the mower, the ride-on mower. Uh, we could fill up this one on the left here. That would be uh, quite an interesting thing to do. But I'm going to put this back here. All the fields are now shooting, all, all the growth is, is appearing. Uh, but obviously a long way from being harvested. But this rain should go a long way. As it hasn't rained for a while. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's just drop this off here. And what we really do need to do is give them water. 
because their trough is totally empty. Now luckily we're very close to the water fill point so we can give them quite a few loads here. We probably should look at upgrading our water tanker because it's very small, it's also very old, but it does do the job. I'm going to put the John Deere tractor away for the time being because it's actually on the forklift, uh, but we probably will use it again today anyway. It's like a go just in here. Yeah, what a horrible day it is. The weather is terrible. But you've got to have days like this really for the uh, for the uh, fields to grow. Right, let's run over to the telehandler. Got the fire lit over there, keep it nice and warm. And yeah, I, I do like the uh, telehandler because it's got the built-in gearbox mod. I believe you can actually get that for any tractor, but the fact that it's got it as default, it's quite a nice idea. Anyway, to save messing around, turning around over there, which we'll go back in this way. Okay, let's fill it up, and this is going to cost money. In Farming Simulator, there's like a fake uh, water plane and the real one. By this I mean the real one is where you can actually fill up the water. Um, it also looks a lot different as well. And the fake one is just to make it look like water, which I think is what this river here next to us is. So if it isn't the real water plane, then you can't fill the water up, you can't fill the Bowser up from it. Um, I think most maps actually take the fake one, so they're just there for looks. Uh, but there is some real ones out there. But I think the main reason for doing that is because your terrain is uh, on different levels. The water plane tends to just sit on one level, so you've got to have a different water plane to have one on a higher piece of ground. Otherwise, uh, your lower land will be totally flooded, if you know what I mean. Um, in Giant Sedity you can see this. Uh, okay, right, so over here, this is, I believe, the place for the water. We're going to do a few of these. Actually, the telehandler isn't a bad, bad machine to use for, for this job. Seems to work quite well. We've got a puddle. Slowly filling up. These cows are going to require an awful lot of water. So it might be a bit tedious doing it with this thing. It is only a thousand litres, I think. Cows? It's not a bath. Come on, cows. Out the water. For drinking. Go back for another load. I think we'll probably do about three loads. Just to keep them going. But next time, we'll upgrade the water bounds. Possibly even to the modified slurry tanker. Because that capacity is a lot bigger than anything else you can get as default in the game. We don't really need the pallet forks on either but we might as well just leave them there. They're not really doing any harm. Okay, next load. Right spin around here. Yeah, it's another good thing about the telehandler. Very manoeuvrable, which is very handy for yard work. We do also have the pig mod as well, which we should look at doing. But obviously we're sort of concentrating our money on this side of things first of all. It's very expensive doing the animals to start off with. And there we go once again, filling it up a bit more. I would imagine the capacity of this is probably 8,000 litres or something, so that would be eight loads of this, but we're not going to do that. As long as they have something to be getting on with, they'll be fine. Okay, one more load. I have just seen something very bizarre. It was a flying egg. No, I'm not joking. It really was a flying egg. It wasn't moving, but it was flying. Let's go and find the flying egg. Can we spot it? Where is the flying egg? Here it is. Hello, flying egg. How strange. That must have been a magic chicken. 
Yep, it's definitely flying. There is no string attached to that. Better harvest it. There we go. We've picked up an egg. It's probably because there's so many actually, it's like overflowing. We should probably pick a few up before we go and drive on them and crush them all. That will do. Right, with the fun out of the way, let's get back to work. I'm going to put this final load of water in the trough. After that, all we need to concentrate on is the bedding, and that will be the cows done for the time being. It's been raining for about three hours in game time, so it might not be around for too much longer. I'm hoping by this afternoon it should have cleared, so we'll be able to possibly get back on the land again. I wonder if in farming simulator you have to have like a drying off period, because currently, for example, if you're in the middle of harvesting, in real life, if you pause with rain, like, I don't know, 10 millimetres of rain, you're going to have to wait for the sun and the wind to dry that crop out again before you can get back to work. But in farming simulator, as soon as it stopped raining and the sun is out, you can just get back on, you can get, get going again. So, that to me is not necessarily a terrible thing, because you want to get going, but it's not 100% realistic. I know this game isn't 100% realistic and it probably is better that way because you want to just have fun. But yeah, it, it's going to be pretty wet. That crop is going to be pretty wet if you just harvest it as soon as the rain has cleared. So uh, I don't know. Just something I thought of. But I, I do tend to think of things like that quite a bit. Put this back over here. And then, if we can afford it, which I doubt, We'll try and get a, uh, a bale shredder. But we might have to resort in uh, getting a different mod, to, which allows you to give them a whole bale. But for bedding, that wouldn't be very realistic. Okay, so what we need to do is buy the double bale spike. This is a mod. And I need to take this over to the store to pick it up. Just drop that off there. And I have just downloaded the uh, feed bale mod. And this allows you to give them an instant bale. So, for example, you don't have to put a straw bale into a shredder for bedding or for feed. Actually, I don't know if it works with bedding, but it definitely works with feed. Uh, now, this is not totally realistic. But I think for the actual feed side of things, it's not a bad idea. Because you would give them just a whole bale. But obviously, for bedding you would uh, use a bale shredder. So there are good and bad points about this mod, but I'm still going to go for it. I want to give it a go. Already fruit again on these orchard trees. That is very productive in the same year. Oh, and look at that. Look at the agroforestry field. The trees are progressing. I think that is the medium growth stage. I think there's probably three. So they're actually doing really well. We'll obviously leave them a bit more before we harvest them. The trees are growing faster than the crop. It's kind of weird, but yes, the idea is there. Right, so it should be here. We put the order in for it, and we should probably bring, bring the Massey Ferguson tractor back as well. Because we left that here from uh, two days ago, I think. Right, so that's good. This is so much better without the middle spike, because that middle spike is its just a bit obstructive, really. It gets in the way. I should think in real life it's, it's pretty handy, but Farming Simulator just way too many collisions on it so it just makes picking up bales very hard see if we can go before those cars no it's going to go crash straight into the car I think the uh, car is doing an emergency stop Dagwinder Farms is not really renowned for the best of driving. And this up here is our sunflower field on the left hand side. That'll be one 
really nice field of yellow sunflowers in the next few weeks hopefully so it's going to look a lot prettier it's already quite a pretty map but I think with the field of sunflowers it's going to look even better okay so that tractor is back we better just stop it there and our bales are just over here from yesterday I think we probably will use the conventional ones first of all. In Farming Simulator 17 I believe you can actually pick them up by hand which is going to be really really handy because with these tiny bales it seems a bit over the top using uh, a forklift. It is possible to pick them up but it's not not really that easy. Yeah moving these by hand would be really good. Go for the bale below. There we go. We've probably got three there, or maybe even four. We've lost one, we've got three. Okay, well that, that should do. We might lose one though. It's highly likely. Yeah, there it goes. We'll come back for that. But we have two bales on the spikes, they look ridiculous. But still, these are going to be hopefully for bedding. I don't know if it, it might not work at all because it is called the bale feed mod. But it would definitely go for. Uh, well, if this is a feed trough out here, it should fit in there. But I'm just sort of uh, trialling things. Things might not go too uh, well. They don't usually go to plan. But there's something about this. I don't know what it is. It's a bale cell point. Handy. But not handy today. That's quite a neat idea, actually. Oh, I love that. That muck spreader there it looks so good. If only you could get that as a working mod, we could actually use it in a field. Because that looks really decent. I've suddenly got this obsession with old machinery. Okay, this time I'm going to put them where I put the feed. And it might register as feed or it might register as bedding. We're just going to have to find out. Right, so it doesn't do anything at all. Okay, so I think we've established a few things here. You've got to do things the right way. So as soon as we can afford to get a bale shredder, we'll obviously get one and we'll do this job properly. Uh, but until then, it means we'll just get liquid manure instead of the manure. Uh, so it's not all bad, but the cows won't really appreciate no bedding. I think there is a tiny bit in there, so it's not in the world. Uh, but yes, um, I think we'll just stick with the traditional way of doing it. It seems to be the most realistic as well. So if I put this back in here, then they can stay there until we need them properly. And that is it for today. So things have gone okay. Just trying a few things as usual. That's when things go wrong though. Um, but yeah, I think actually we've progressed quite well. We've got the cows, so they're now producing the milk and they've been fed. So it's not too bad. They've also got water. So if we go on here, we should be able to see that they are doing okay. Productivity is still 0% because we've only just started the game again. Um, but yeah, they're already producing milk as well. So that is it for today. Thank you for watching. And until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.